Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the online VGC20 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. In the last two episodes, we've been featuring a really interesting team with Kangaskhan and Trick Room, so this will be our final episode with it, and we'll switch to something brand new in the next one. This was, of course, built by a player called Celeste. You can find them in the description below. There's also a rental code and a showdown export for this team, so feel free to try it out yourselves, and let's just jump right into today's episode. Before we get started, though, I just wanted to quickly say uh, thank you. It's actually my birthday today, and I just wanted to express my appreciation for all of the viewers and the fans and the supporters throughout this last year, and, you know, beyond on that as well. It uh, means a lot to have so many people consistently come out and watch the videos and support me and you know whatever I do. So thank you from the bottom of my heart and I hope you all stick around. Uh, you know it's been almost a year since Sword and Shield has come out and we're still going strong with the content. So yeah it's been a blast to make this last year and I appreciate everyone who has continued to come out and watch these videos. Uh, first game of the day we're up against a really interesting team of Vanellux, Verisciuta, Weezing, Chandelier, Jolteon, and Haxorus. So, I mean, I feel like if we get Trick Room up, we should just sweep. It's a relatively hyper-offensive team for my opponent's end. So, like, I kind of want to lead Kangaskhan Dustflops here, the usual. Uh, we could go Raichu Hatterene in this game as well, but there are a bunch of Pokemon that Hatterene is you know, weak to. Um, <laughs> Raichu into Delmize would be really interesting, but I feel like just going the Trick Room approach, approach here is super safe. Uh, with... Rhyperior and Delmize. The only question here, as always, you have to ask when using a hard Trick Room team is, how does my opponent deny Trick Room? What could potentially be a bad lead to run into is a Chandelier plus Weezing. Because if you have both Chandelier and Weezing, then you can go for an Imprison or Trick Room with Chandelier and Weezing can taunt into the Dusclops. However, everything else doesn't really put on that much pressure. Uh, of course, we lost against Barrasuda and the Vanellux a while ago, so... Um, that, you know, when we played against that duo last time, it was just Dynamax, Barrasquita, Max Darkness into Blizzards from Vanellux. It's super powerful, but I think if we see that lead, we can just go for the Fake Out onto the Vanellux, and Dustflop should be able to survive any one attack from any Dynamax Pokemon. So, let's get into today's episode. Thanks, as always, for watching Road Trank. If you enjoy, please share support by leaving a like. And question of the day, I want to know what you all would like to see from the upcoming DLC. In terms of Pokemon, tutor moves, uh, story content, anything, let me know in the comments below. So, it's going to be Chandelure and Barrasquita here. We're going to frisk the items, and it's Specs and Life Orb. Okay, well, that makes my life super easy, because... Ooh, does it? My opponent could make a really big brain play here, and Dynamax the Chandelure. And go Phantasm, and, like, Barrasquita targets the Slops as well. Um, Because you, you would think Barrasquita's going to Dynamax here, right? But if my opponent anticipates the Scrappy Fake Out... That'd be a really good play on there, and I'm gonna go for the fake out onto Chandelure uh, and Trick Room. I do think if we, if my opponent does go for the big brain play here and calls it correctly, they will probably just win the game because the opposing team is rather hyper offensive. So in, in this lead, like what I would expect is Barrasquita max you max Darkness and then Heat Wave or Shadow Ball just to KO the Dusclops, not expecting the scrappy Kangaskhan. But if you've seen this team before or just seen Kangaskhan in general, you might think, and yeah, they go for it. Okay, well done. I I didn't feel super confident, like, at that point, it's kind of like a glorified prediction, but, you know, uh, props to my opponent, great game sense there to recognize that, uh, and unfortunately, that will put us in a huge deficit here, because this double up should pick up the KO, I would think, um, let's see, <laughs> really well done there, so if we, I think this, this matchup feels like it boils down to who calls it correctly on that first turn, and, uh, you know, I, I wanted to target the Barrasquita there just because not all Kangaskhan's run scrappy, but I think people are starting to recognize this Kangaskhan, so yeah, well done. That actually puts us in an awful spot too, because this eats a defense drop. Uh, Barrasquita can probably just one-shot the Rhyperior, maybe even the Delmise gets wrecked. And if Trick Room doesn't go up for this team, it's pretty much a disaster, so. That's the kind of heads-up play that like, you can make um, against the Kangaskhan Dusclops lead. I think up until this point, we've had very good success in pretty much always setting up Trick Room, and my opponent played it exactly like they needed to here in this position, so. Yeah, I mean, even though I called the potential of Dynamax Chandler there, it's, it's, like, it could go either way. Um, but, well done, well done. Okay. Uh, I, I bet Kangaskhan probably just gets one shot here, right? Yeah, I mean, you can just max 
Flare into Kangaskhan and then target Rhyperior. Max Flare probably one-shots us. I mean, I need to KO Barrasquita. Because Rhyperior maybe stands... Rhyperior actually kind of wrecks everything if we KO Barrasquita. So, yeah. Like, obviously if I went for Fake Out onto Barrasquita turn 1, uh, Barrasquita could just max Darkness and then Shadow Ball from Chandelier. Uh, and they go for close combat. Uh, I, I bet the Chandelier has max overgrowth as well. So, yeah, I mean, this matchup, I think if Trick Room goes up, we win. If Trick Room doesn't go up, we lose. Um, now, I could have led Raichu and the Hatterene specifically against this, but Hatterene doesn't really one-shot either Pokemon, so I didn't feel super confident in that. And yeah, there's overgrowth as well. <laughs> so we just got absolutely demolished by Hyper Offense. Uh, but I think my opponent played this exactly like they needed to, so... You know, we've had a lot of great wins with this team, but I think this is also a great lesson in how you can beat a team like this. Uh, you know, my opponent came with a great game plan. It is tricky, you know, kind of calling that 50-50 on turn one. Um, and I think, you know, my opponent was pretty highly ranked as well. So, you know, they recognize like uh, you know, they need to go one step above and, and you know, kind of make a unpredictable play. And it was a great play on their end. Um... That's that's pretty much it. You know, if we if we do go for the fake out onslaught, Barrasquita there, turn one, get Trick Room up though, I think we pretty much just win because there's nothing for the right period in the late game. So it's a very volatile matchup. So in a matchup like this, you always have to ask yourself: Is there any better option than calling the 50-50 turn one on who's going to Dynamax? Now in the, like now without knowing it's Life Orb Chandelier, or sorry, Life Orb Barrasquita Spec Chandelier. Uh, I don't know. There's just so much hyper offense from the opposing side. Because we don't have an Electric-type attack on Raichu. If I had an Electric-type attack, maybe I'd feel a little bit more confident in attacking with it. Um, I mean, if you're my opponent here, you just go for a Grass-type attack onto Rhyperior, right? Or sorry, Water-type attack. Like, I don't think there's really any way to win this, but I can try, I guess, to... Uh, I max-carded him. I mean, I think this, this... Yeah, there's really no way we can win this. It was lost after turn one. Um, but I think a loss like this is once again good to reflect on um so the question then becomes do i have a more consistent lead because while i you know mentioned the idea of chandler dynamaxing like let's say i were playing my opponent again they could totally just reverse it right and that's the cool thing about the offense from their end they have two ways to actually knock out dust clops uh so it's not like oh if i just fake out the right pokemon i will win uh because either pokemon could dynamax and put on that offense against us so yeah, I think our win rate against Barrasquita is like sub 50% for sure. It has been a tough Pokemon to go up against and really great usage here. It shows that you don't even need to Dynamax it. It has so much offensive uh, potential. So, yeah. Uh, what do we lead against Chandler, Barrasquita, other than trying to call the 50-50 on Fake Out Turn 1? Because the problem is I could go... Um, Speed swapping doesn't even help because Barrasquita is so dang fast. So I don't think that's the answer either. So if Raichu is not the answer, what do we do? Because Rhyperior, like the thing is Barrasquita Chandler has so much good offense against all our sweepers, right? Uh, the combination of those will hit everything we have for super effective damage. You've got the Throat Chop to hit the Dust Clops. You've got the Shadow Ball to hit the uh, Delmise. <laughs> so it's just an absolute demolition here. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think, you know... It's definitely a tough matchup, but it was if we called it correctly on the first turn, we're in a very favorable position. Um, but I think you know sometimes you have to you have to realize that you're not always gonna have like perfect matchups with every team, uh, and that that lead specifically was super strong. Like I think my opponent's team was super interesting because you know it's just like a lot of bunch of uh, a lot of fast Pokemon like Jolteon, Barrasquita. Uh, you can get like defense drops or spadef drops, uh, but you can see the synergies there, right? Like just so much offense coming out immediately and without a better means of speed control other than trick room uh there's a very good game plan to deny the trick room so yeah all right we're up against weavile colossal this reminds me a lot of the colossal team we used in the beginning of series six um i think it's the same six pokemon actually if i remember correctly so the thing about ferrothorn is i always feel compelled to bring both rapier and hatterene uh, I could bring Raichu, which allows me to fake out into something, or Speed Swap. But I feel like Kangaskhan Dusclops here is just pretty solid, because I get to fake out into the Weavile. Um, we haven't really brought Raichu at all while playing with this team, but haven't had much room to bring it out, to be honest. 
Um, question is who I want in the back. You would think Rhyperior just to beat the Colossal, but does my opponent really bring Colossal into this matchup? Uh, I mean, if they do and I don't bring Rhyperior, we're just toast. So I feel like I feel forced to bring it. Uh, and then I like I want Hatterene for Flare into the Ferrothorn. It makes the Pre-Marina matchup a little bit weaker, but Gmax Hatterene still should do a lot of damage into Pre-Marina. So, yeah. That was a really cool game from my opponent in that last one. Like, um... I, I love Hyper Offense, personally. Like, I think it's really, really fun to play with, and I, I've used a lot of Hyper Offensive teams throughout the years. Uh, and I think that was a really cool demonstration. That's That goes to show, like, smart, flexible Dynamaxes, right? Uh, I think often with that team, Weavile is going to be... Or not Weavile, sorry. As I see Weavile come out. Uh, often with that team, the Pokemon that's going to be Dynamaxing is going to be the... Um, the, the, the... What do I want to say here? Uh, Frisk, Sash, yeah, and Life Orb. The Pokemon that wants to be Dynamaxing uh, often is the Barrascuda. Like, it's just so fast. Um, but my opponent had a flexible game plan, didn't commit to just, like, you know, flow charting and saying, okay, I'm always going to Dynamax Barrascuda. And that's one of the reasons why I think Dynamax is really interesting, you know, in the format. Um, okay, I mean, I think this is just a fake out onto Weavile, quite frankly, in Trick Room. Because fake out denies the beat up if you fake out into the Kangaskhan, that's fine. There's a switch out, maybe Ferrothorn, but I can just burn the Ferrothorn with the Will-O-Wisp, so I actually don't mind seeing that that much. Uh, as the Virizion does not protect, indicating it should be going for a close combat, which I wouldn't mind either, because that's a free switch in for me. So let's see. Yep. That's a fine turn one. Like, I think that's a relatively obvious switch from my opponent's end, uh, but there's no reason to not risk i mean no reason to risk anything here right like what if my opponent goes for the super crazy read and like decides to just go for beat up uh and if they get the beat up off like plus four max overgrowth maybe that just ko's dustlops with the life orb if we don't get trick room up then we're doomed because <laughs> as you can see this team very much uh, relies on the trick room so yeah okay this is fine i mean i could pretty easily <sighs> it's between hatterian and rapierier like rapierier is a pretty easy bring I'm leaning more towards Hatterene, though, quite frankly. I've got Mystical Fire as well. I can even max Hatterene, right? But I feel like we might want to max Rhyperior. Hmm. With Dust Bumps, I can will I can also self-pain split to heal back. I should remember that. Yeah. Um, With Rhyperior, I can also max Flare. Okay, I don't mind going out into Rhyperior. Uh... Uh, I guess there's probably a potential pre-marina in the back though, right? That's what I have to watch out for. Yeah. It's lefty's Ferrothorn. I wonder if it has Power Whip. Like, the, the play I'm leaning towards here is just Max Flaring the Verizian and will o being the Ferrothorn. I think it's relatively safe. I just, if Pre-Marina is the last one, this gets a little bit trickier. Like, Hatterene could have been a better Pokemon to bring out here, because it could potentially just one-shot either Pokemon in this position. Um, but I like the offensive pressure that I put up with Rhyperior right now. Okay, so no switches. I was worried about a potential switch into Pre-Marina. I mean, that could still come out later on, but... Best case is we hit the Will-O-Wisp, Ferrothorn procs our weakness policy, we one-shot the Verizian, and then we have two turns more of Dynamax here with Rhyperior. It's totally likely, I think, that the Verizian may protect just to stall out a turn of Trick Room. Because uh, we know it's Life Orb, it's not something like AV. So, let's see. Oh, they Dynamaxed. That may be a problem. Wow, I did not expect that. I, I was... <laughs> I wonder if Overgrowth just one-shots us, then it might. I did not see that coming. Um, okay, they go for Iron Defense. I don't really care about that, because I've got Hatterene to deal with that in the late game. But yeah, I think this is the team we used earlier in the season. Uh, so, man, if I just went for Self Brick Break and Flare, though, that would have been really nice. But it wasn't... Yeah, it was, I guess Ferrothorn shouldn't be able to one-shot us after we Dynamax anyway, so I don't think I needed to show the Verizian that much respect. Oh, wait, that one-shot. Is that a crit? No. <laughs> okay, I guess I guess Flare is just really strong. Uh, I mean, that's also part of the reason why I brought out Rhyperior over the Hatterene, because Rhyperior... Or sorry, uh, Verizian's defense is really bad compared to its special defense. Um... I didn't think Flare would get the 1k KO there, though, to be honest. 
So that's obviously a really good turn for us because now even if you have Primarina, I've set up the Sun and I can just one-shot everything because my opponent's basically playing without a Dynamax and yeah, Primarina's in the back here. So I think this is a super safe opportunity to just go for Max Quake onto the Primarina and self Brick Break. I don't really care about this Ferrothorn because Hatterene can just Mystical Fire this in the late game to win. But there's the Power Whip though. Okay, so they're going to proc our policy. Um, man, I, was it? Yeah, I think that set was Iron Defense, Power Whip... No Leech Seed? Uh, so waste of a Brick Break here, but whatever. I mean, just to guarantee that we get this off is still worth it, I think. Uh, and the beautiful thing here is that Weavile coming in can't really pick up a KO onto either of our Pokemon. Uh, nor can it Fake Out, because I still have one more turn to Dynamax. Uh, we crit the Primarina there, but I don't think that matters. So Weavile comes in, we can just Brick Break it and uh, Max Quake it. Pick up a Knockout onto that. And as soon as Trick Room is over, we just bring the Hatterene, click... Uh, Mystical Fire in Sun, and that'll be a KO onto the Ferrothorn. So, yeah. I mean, it, it did have Power Whip, which is why I went for the burn earlier. Uh, I, I guess that given that Max Thor one shots the Verizian, our play was actually pretty safe. <laughs> but yeah, I was very surprised to see the Dynamax there on the Verizian. I felt like Pre Marina probably would have been a better Max option, but that's why I wanted to Flare just to set up the Sun ASAP, because the Sun is valuable here even just to reduce, you know, water type damage. So, yeah, I don't think Weavile has Protect here. Um. No reason to go for anything else. There's still three turns of sun. I'm just going to flare and brick break into Weavile. Because once we get that out of the way, like, we have Hatterene, right? And Hatterene should just be able to one-shot the Ferrothorn, which is why I brought it into this matchup. So, yeah. Definitely uh, some rapid games today. Like, that first one was pretty much over after turn one. This one I felt pretty good about. It's, I mean, as soon as Verizian goes down, like, it's over. So, you know, there's a lot of momentum, especially with you know, a hyper offense trick room team like this. Uh, that's not really, I mean, it's, it's pretty defensive, but it's, it's you know, very dedicated towards setting up trick room. So as you can see often, it's like, if you get up trick room, your odds of winning are very, very high. Uh, although, you know, I've had some opponents play really smartly around it where they don't necessarily knock out Kangaskhan uh, and I don't feel super comfortable switching Kangaskhan out either. So then I'm waiting for them to give me a free switch in. So sometimes when playing with this team, you have to kind of be decisive and just say, you know what? I don't think my opponent's going to try to get Kangaskhan. I'm going to hard switch here and then try to get as much out of my sweepers as possible. Uh, but this last game was just, you know, we get up trick and we go from there. I think it was pretty tough for my opponent to lead against this though, uh, because it was, you know, there isn't anything that really pressures Dusclops. Uh, the reason why that first matchup was so scary is because my opponent not only had one, but two Pokemon on the field that had super effective damage to Dusclops. Dusclops is obviously one of, if not the bulkiest Pokemon in the format at the moment, right? So it's often very difficult to knock out, uh, and you're going to need multiple super effective attacks to deal with it. And what our first opponent did really effectively was just bring out a lot of those, uh, obviously turning it into a Dynamax or a Max move. Uh, it just you know, increases that damage output as well, so yeah. I'm trying to think what my opponent in that last match could have even done. I feel like, you know, uh, the games today have definitely been a little bit more matchup based. Um, okay, interesting. Talonflame, Rhyperior, Vanellix, Tox, Dusclops, and the Delmise. Huh. Uh, so we, we obviously have a similar core here with Dusclops, Rhyperior, Delmise. If there weren't a Talonflame, I'd even maybe consider Raichu, but uh, it's just so hard to bring Raichu. Especially because it could be Choice Band Rhyperior with Tailwind Talonflame. Uh, so, could just go Kangaskhan. I mean, we lead Kangaskhan Dusclops so much with this team, but like, it really is just such a good lead option. Like, there are not that many things that can beat it. We finally ran into one, you know, really good counter in that first game. Um, I just, if they're also a room service, that's where this gets really dicey. <laughs> I feel like these four work out fine, but I really I'm nervous about the Delmise mirror. Uh, they also maybe can just deny my Trick Room or reverse it, you know, either through Taunt from Talonflame or Dusclops reversing Trick Room. So both of those would be pretty bad. Um, Cause ideally our Delmise should sweep. Uh, also, one really interesting thing is that Delmise, if it's room service, like. If we're both room service and we don't have our items anymore, then we can't use Poltergeist. So we'd have to, you know, get our the most out of Max Phantasms. The Talonflame and Rhyperior, though, I mean, this makes me think, like, this is a super free fake out Talonflame Trick Room play turn one, I think. And I'm expecting Band on the Rhyperior here. Sharp Beak, yeah, and Band. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, we're going to take so much damage from Band Rhyperior, but I don't think I have an option other than to fake out Talonflame and Trick Room, because otherwise... So my opponent could make a really cool play here. They could just hard switch Talonflame out into the... Uh, 
down mice. If they brought that. I wonder if I don't. I, I wouldn't think choice ban rock wrecker KOs dust clubs. But maybe my opponent goes for a rock slide and they get a flinch, then they you're just in a really commanding position. Yeah, there's the Talonflame switch out. Delmice, yep. So I wonder if that means they're gonna still EQ, because you would do a fair amount of damage to Yeah, okay, they're gonna go for Rock Slide. How much does that do to us? Not very much actually. Not bad. And we get trick room up. Okay. The only question now is are you room service on Delmice? And even if you are. Okay, it's not room service, so that means that our Delmice, you know, can come out and put in some work. We know they're locked into Banded Rock Slide right now. I don't really want to switch Kangaskhan out, so honestly, I think I'm just going to last resort the Delmice and will o -Wisp it. Um, Rhyperior is not very scary because it should be faster and more offensive. Might even be Lightning Rod given that, it, you know, it's with the Talonflame. So I think Delmice Max is here, but the upside is that we have Trick Room and we have Room Service Delmice. So we were, we're definitely going to outspeed the opposing Delmice uh, after Room Service. And Dusclops is still faster than Delmice under Trick Room, so we should get the Burn off as well. However, after the if you're Phantasming, you get a Defense Drop. I'm curious if Rock Slide picks up a double KO. That could be pretty bad. Although it would give me two free switch ins. Okay, will is connects, which is huge. Let's see if it's Lumberry by any chance. Normally, Delmizes like to run Life Orb. No Lum, which is good. There's Phantasm. That's fine. That's still... Yeah, that's enough damage where Rock Slide should pick up the double KO. Ah, that was a crit. I was like, that did a lot of damage. So I think Dusclops would have survived if it weren't for the crit there. Probably, but it is what it is. Uh, I feel like we've definitely been on the luckier end recently uh, in our game, so can't complain. Uh, so Rock Slide's going to double connect. That should pick up a double KO here. Yeah. It's not awful, though, <laughs> as another crit comes out. It's not awful because I do get a free switch into my Delmice now, right? Um, and my opponent's Delmice is burnt. I don't even have to max my... I get max Rhyperior here, right? Because I could go for Poltergeist. We have a lot of options. Um, a big question I have here is what is my opponent's fourth Pokemon? I think it might be Vanellux, which is why I'm leaning towards maxing Rhyperior a little bit more because I can Rockfall with that. Um, so the upside here is that we get the room service. Uh, curious how fast the Delmize is. It's probably min speed, right? Like, I could very easily... Do I think Vanellix is in the back? I still have three turns of Trick Room. Actually, that's that's pretty good for us. So given that, I honestly, I'm kind of... Oh, actually, I feel like Rhyperior switches out here, right? I mean, Rock Slide's not really doing very much to what we have out right now. So why don't I just go for Rock Slide? Because I could see a Talonflame switch in right now. Max and just Phantasm into the Delmines. If your Rhyperior stays in, whatever, I know you're choiced. You won't pick up a Knockout onto either of my Pokemon. My Delmines will definitely outspeed the opposing Delmines. Uh, and yeah, I think it's likely right here switches on into Talonflame or Vanellux. So there's a switch out. That's what we want to see. There's Talonflame. That's perfect. Uh, I, I think that puts us in a very advantageous position because now Delmai just sweeps through everything. Um, it's in a great position to just get a ton of damage off across the board. So even if the opposing Delmice protects, like we know Sharp Beat Talonflame, so Rock Slide picks up the KO onto the Talonflame if we don't miss. And then we still have two turns of Trick Room to work with. We know Rhyperior is also Choice Banded, so that can't even do anything. Uh, I mean, it can't protect is what I meant to say. Uh, and they don't even protect with Delmice here. So this should just be game over because now once Rhyperior comes out, we can just one-shot that with either of our Pokemon. Uh, and normally with Choice Pokemon, your goal is to basically stall out the Trick Room. Um, but, you know, without having Protect, on a lot of these Pokemon, uh, we're in a great spot there. So that's why I didn't want to, uh, you know, commit a ground type attack into the right here. We know it's choice. You know, we know our opponent already Dynamax, so why bother risking? Uh, there's really no point in going for high horsepower. Uh, I shouldn't say no point. The value in going for high horsepower there is if my opponent stays in, because um, then I pick up a double KO. We know Talonflame is in the back. Um, but, you know, I felt like even if right here stayed in, we'd be in decent shape. Uh, it is going to be Vanellix here in the back for my opponent. Okay, um, Vanellix, Vanellix, Vanellix. There are two turns of Trick Room left. I have Steel Spike, so... I think Vanellix probably protects here, but Banded Rhyperior after we get a Defense Boost should not be a problem. So I'm just going to Steel Spike into the Vanellix, because we can double up onto that slot. Only fear here is if their Rhyperior for some reason is Min Speed, but Min Speed with uh, Talonflame, Tailwind makes no sense. Like normally Choice Band Rhyperior is like max attack, max speed. Uh, or maybe some HP investment, but 
Here, I just want to cover for Focus Sash Vanellux. Don't want to get blizzarded. Uh, even if Vanellux protects, we get the defense boost on the Rhyperior, so I don't think a banded high horsepower from Rhyperior KOs us. And if you're locking yourself into, you know, ho high horsepower, uh, no protect comes out, so that should seal up the game. But if you're if you're locking yourself into, you know, banded high horsepower, how are you going to be uh, beat Delmize in the late game? So, yeah. Uh, you know, this is what I wanted to do in that first game, and this is what we have been able to do effectively, set up Trick Room and then go from there. Um... Yep, so Fire Punch comes out. I don't want to risk, you know, a high horsepower or a rock slide miss because no reason to go for either of those. And if we miss and, you know, Vanellex Blizzard crits or, uh, okay, Rock Rocker comes out. There's a ton of damage, um, but not enough. Yeah, uh, if Blizzard crits there uh, or, or freezes us, we're doomed. So even if Vanellex protects her, I know I still have another tr a turn of Trick Room to work with. Uh, so I can just target that slot with the Steel Spike again or even a Phantasm and then high horsepower into Rapier. So, yeah. I wonder if Steel Spike one shots. I would think so, because I think it's probably Lightning Rod right here, here but yeah, it actually survives. Okay. Do you really need Lightning Rod on that team? Eh, maybe. Okay, and High Horse Power connects. I mean, I, I, I obviously could have just gone for Overgrowth, but I was curious about the Steel Spike uh, and whether it'd be enough to knock out or not. Okay, uh, so these last few games have been pretty straightforward. I think if, if you, I mean, as you guys have seen with this team, and I was alluding to earlier, if you set up Trick Room, you're often just going to be in fantastic shape. Um, yeah, the, the Chandelier Bears to lead, I'm still thinking about. Like, that was just really cool. That was really cool. I feel like every time we go up against Barrascuta, there's like a new partner that like, <laughs> gives us trouble as well. So that's pretty entertaining to see. Um, but because the matches have been fast today, we have time for a fourth. So why not? We're up against Cheerio. <laughs> well, this team is familiar. Oh god, I have to play around Zorark. Um, okay, well we know that Noivern has the taunt, and we know that PZ has Trick Room. So normally th that team's answer against Trick Room is to lead Noivern, PZ, taunt, Trick Room, turn one. <laughs> so I can lead Kangaskhan, Dusclops, and just bait my opponent into setting up Trick Room for me. Honestly, kind of tempting. Um, man, uh, the, the Zora here is just what's so scary because, like, <laughs> I might fake out something thinking it's, you know, uh, whatever is in and it ends up being Zora. Oh, though, I guess fake outing Zora isn't that bad. Huh. Kang Clops, Prayer Delmas. Kang Clops. It's just, if we set up Trick Room here, we're so good, but, uh, I At least I know what tricks are going to come up from the opposing end, so, yeah, I'm going to just try Kangaskhan Dusclops. <sighs> However, I, I... I feel like there's a solid chance my opponent uh, knows that I know about the team. So if that's the case, we are going to have some buying games on turn one. I just, I don't know what else it could lead really safely here. It's PZ Primarina. Um, <laughs> so my first question is, oh man, is there a Zor- Oh wait, the, uh, the, the, sorry, sorry, we have Frisk. So the Frisk, now I know Zorark is, uh, it's, it, it's not PZ, it's Zorark. Oh, but this is the same situation as we were in the previous game. Like, because Zora could max, and you could max Darkness and tap the Dusclops. So the question here is whether I want to make the greed, because I know you're Zorark, and say that like, you're going to max Primarina instead of the Zorark. Because I obviously want to fake out the PZ. But I'm going to fake out Primarina here, calling the Primarina max. This is, this is like the same situation from game one. Alright, let's see. If Zorark maxes, we're doomed. <laughs> uh, this is where Raichu and Hatterene actually could have been a good lead. Okay, nice. We called it correctly, so. I'm glad I learned something from that first game today. That was a really key lesson, actually. Unless Zorark one-shots us with max darkness. I, mean, I wouldn't think so, but I guess we'll find out. Yeah, so that that's the one hard thing about this lead. Uh, these potential scenarios where you have to call the correct... Oh my... That's when it KO. 
<laughs> Wait, that's so strong. Uh I did not know that was the damage calc, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> that was cool. Um, I'm actually really curious on that calc. I think this game is over, honestly, at this point. It's the exact same scenario from game one. Like, I made that play because I thought we would survive. Uh, but it is the same type of attack bonus. I just, uh, let's see, Zorark into Dusclops. Like, I forget if we're specially invested here or not. Uh, 163 deep spadef, so... Okay, uh, let's still play this out. Uh, I feel like I have to go out into Rhyperior. Oh, wait, we, we're like... There's not very much spadef investment at all. Okay. So if you're curious... Max Darkness Life Orb against our Dusclops has... Just over a 50% chance to KO. So that was a damage roll. But to be honest, I didn't even think it would be a roll. Uh, oh, wait, never mind. This is saying it is 87.5% chance to one shot. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, with all the time I used uh, Zorark with that team, I didn't think it would do that much damage into a uh, Dusclops. Wow. Lesson learned. Um. Okay. Do we... <laughs> this this might seem odd. I'm actually gonna just max the the Kangaskhan because like Rhyperior is just gonna get dunked on by a Hyper Voice anyway. With Kangaskhan, we could get some speed. I mean, we're min speed, so I don't think it really makes a difference. But hey, we get to say we down to max Kangaskhan. So I think you know this was a good episode to showcase how you can deal with Dusclops. Um, wow, it's so yeah. With using Zorark that entire time with that team, did not know that would be the cow. Uh, if you're max HP, max Bedef Sassy, then max Darkness is not a KO, but yeah, this Dusclops just happens to be very heavily invested in defense. Okay, Darkness comes out. Holy. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I mean, we had the, the special defense drop, though. <laughs> wow. Um, so if, if I were to lead against this very specific lead... I would have led, um, oh, DC, I guess their internet must have gone off. I hope it wasn't my internet. I mean, obviously that game was over, they deserved the win. Uh, that makes it look like it was their internet, which I feel bad about, uh, because obviously they had won that game. I mean, I'm chalking it as a loss, they clearly outplayed us. I just, I did not know that calc from Night Days into Dust Clubs. that's crazy. That's really impressive. Because, like, when I was playing with this team, I always, like, Klefki Zorark just to go for the, the Metal Sound uh, Night Days combo. But, wow. Talk about strength. Well, I, I loved using that Zorark team. Um, okay, so what could I have done better in that fourth game? Uh, and if I, you know, whoever I just played, apologies uh, for the internet there. Because uh, we ended up getting the win, but they should have gotten the points, obviously. Um, the thing is, like... I never brought Raichu once with this team, uh, at least in the recordings. I actually played a lot of practice games where I brought Raichu. The thing is that Raichu, like, often you're pairing it with Hatterene, and then it's kind of RNG dependent, like, because uh, you're going for G-Max Smites, and then so, like, I mean, it's more in your favor that your opponent hits himself in Confusion, like one of their two Pokemon, but I don't like leading it to variance uh, as much there. And part of the problem why I never brought Raichu in a lot of these matches where the Trick Room option didn't seem amazing is because there was often a really fast speed control option from the opposing end. Uh, now Talonflame, for example, Noivern in this case as well. So if I lead the Raichu and the Hatterene into PZ Noivern, that's not a good, you know, that's not very good. Um, but our, our this last opponent and our first opponent, they were both just one step ahead of us in the lead matchup. I called the lead matchup incorrectly, and even though we had some room to work with, I mean, man, I just did not know that Zora Calc on a Dusclops. That's impressive. Um, and so that's why, you know, Dusclops uh, spreads are interesting. You know, a lot, some players like to opt for a lot of defense. This has This was bold. Uh, or not bold, uh, you know, relaxed as opposed to sassy. Uh, and so not having the increased uh, spadef hurts us there because uh, it turned it into a very favorable role for the Zora. Because if you are max HP, max spadef, then, you know, that's never a one-hit KO. Um, but that's a really interesting calculation to know. Uh, and I, I think, you know, I, that's honestly something that I, I 
thought we would survive for sure. So, lesson learned there. Because I think if we get Trick Room up there, we're in great shape, right? The next turn I can just go for Pain Split onto the Zoroark and Giga, not Giga Impact, um, go for Last Resort. And as soon as I get Pre-Marina, oh, sorry, uh, the Dalmizin, we're in good shape. But Zoroark offensively was really good there, actually. So, like, if you ask me how I would have replayed that, <laughs> the tricky thing is if I lead Raichu Hatterene, I, uh, the Frisk does not let me figure out how the Zoroark is built, or, or whether it's Zoroark or Porygon Z, uh, which is why Zoroark is actually such an interesting option, right? Because then I have to respect it as PZ, and I'm like, oh man, Porygon Z can just max strike us, that's really bad. So then I don't feel great about maxing Hatterene and going for the speed swap, so... Yeah, I don't know if we had, like, a super consistent option in the first or fourth game. This fourth one, I, I don't even know. Like, that lead was really smart, the pre-marina. Uh, and, and that's one of the beauties of, like, the max moves. You, you combo it, right? You get the max darkness. You get the spadef drop uh, or, or the defense drop, like, from Phantasm in that first game. And then that allows your other Pokemon to take advantage of these boosts. Uh, so, you know, I, I think up until this point, uh, in the last two episodes, Kangaskhan and Dustlap seemed nearly unbeatable. Uh into the matchups we were going up against, but today you could see, you know, some of the ways to beat it. And, you know, I, I, I think that's great. You know, if you're, uh, every team definitely, it, you're never going to have a perfect team. Uh, and I ran into matchups that I was unfamiliar with and I needed to approach them better. That first game, you know, I called out the turn one play, but I didn't think they'd go for it. And, you know, they just made outstanding play turn one. This last game, I didn't know that, uh, Calc against Zorark, but th that's the thing. With Zorark and Team Preview, I actually never feel like there's a super safe lead option, because Zorark actually hits the majority of this team for super effective damage. Uh, and the Pre-Marina was really smart, too, because Rhyperior actually has a pretty favorable matchup into that team, but then Pre-Marina alone covers the Rhyperior, so, yeah. Anyway, those are some really fun games, obviously, you know, pretty one-sided for the most part, but you get to see kind of both the strengths and the weaknesses. Uh, and overall, I, I love playing with Kangaskhan, so I hope you all enjoyed this team. So thanks as always for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you all very soon. All right, peace.